morning to one and all. My group and I are presenting on the Afro Bahamians. Where can we find these people? On the beautiful island of Bahamas. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Afro Bahamians history. Afro Bahamians came by way of Bermuda with Eleutheran adventurers in the 17th century. British loyalists resettled in the Bahamas in 1780 after the Revolutionary War. This migration brought 7,000 people to Bahamas. Some Africans earned their freedom and immigrated as members as the Ethiopian Regiment. In 1807, the British abolished the slave trade which brought Africans into the Caribbean. Throughout the 19th century, almost 7,000 Africans resettled in the Bahamas after being freed from the British royal slave troops. On July 10th, 1973, the Bahamas became a free and sovereign country and in 325 years of British rule. As of the 10th of, the July, of July, in the Hence, on the 10th of July, Afro-Bahamians celebrate their Independence Day. Afro-Bahamian language. The official language of the Afro-Bahamians is English. However, most of the population speak English-based dialect. Bahamian Creole is described as a Bahamian dialect by both white and black Afro-Bahamians, but in slightly different forms. The Afro-Bahamians dialect shares similar features with other Caribbean English based Creole. These are some examples. Bowl, bowl. Milk, milk. Pin, pen. That's your book. That's your book. Hers, her own. Yours, yours. Island life ain't no fun. Let's not treat everybody like a brother. Just remember, that's the art. Afro Bahamian clothing. The traditional clothing are the hula kaiko, the tapa cloth, and the pau. Afro Bahamians also use modern Western style clothing. Colorful costumes of all kinds are one of the Jankum Festival. Here are some examples of the male attire and also the female attire. Afro Bahamian the music of the Afro Bahamians is called Jankuno. The Jankuno is celebrated on New Year's and Boxing Day. The Jankuno is said to be derived from their Canadian leader, Jankuno. In 1973, independence was gained and that started the Jankuno celebration. Another part of their music is Calypso, which originated from Trinidad and Tobago. passed down to generations orally. The main folklore that is known not only throughout the Caribbean or in Bahamas but also the world is the Anansi stories. Anansi is a very important figure in the Afro-Bahamian stories. Stories about the character have origins in the Akan culture in Africa. Anansi is a very cunning trickster and is usually a spider guard. But in some stories, he is a human, a human and part spider, or in some, he is just a spider. Anansi is a very rebellious person and sometimes he likes to cause trouble. He is someone who has the ability to achieve things in clever ways by deceiving others. Afro Bahamian food. Grown food is considered the most important part of the Afro Bahamian diet. African meals are considered the main dishes of the Bahamas. They are made 
with starchy items and can contain a wide variety of meat and fishes that are well marinated in various spices of herbs. A wide variety of staples are also eaten. Lightly pickled meat, pepper and spices are prominent in Afro-Bahamian cuisine. This is a typical Bahamian dish, locally eaten on a daily basis. It consists of peas and rice, comprised of locally grown rice and black-eyed peas. The meat is chicken protein, well seasoned and marinated in spices, giving the entire meal its rich and very spicy appeal. It is garnished with green vegetables, fruits and cheese, providing a complete meal of all food groups. Anansi. The folk or Anansi story is a spider that originated from the Ashanti people of Ghana and has orally been passed down orally over generations. He is also known as Anansi, Kwaku Anansi, and Bra Anansi. In some belief, Anansi is responsible for creating the sun, the stars, and the moon, as well as teaching mankind the technique of agriculture. The objective behind the development of him is to outsmart and triumph over the most powerful opponents through the use of cunning, creativity, and wit. The settings where the stories are told were at night in groups. Back then, right before bed, the players would tell, would tell each other the Anansi story. Stories of Anansi were shared from the memories of elders of the community, poor grandparents and parents, and told the children. What made the person equipped to have such a role was their wisdom. All the stories and wisdom they shared with their grandchildren are told with good intention. They want their loved ones to learn as much as possible about life and to succeed in the world. The story reflects the moral and ethical element of the Bahamian culture as Anansi can be a trickster. Based on his personality, he leads his opponents diplomatically as an example and teaches them a lesson by least expected terms. In this story, he used his wisdom to trick animals that were bigger than himself. This made them think of ways to survive the difficult times while fighting for their freedom. The story arrived with the assistance of the slave who spoke of it, and the slave who were transmitted to the Caribbean by way of the transatlantic slave trade. The Anansi story continues because they keep cultures alive as it's a rich part of their tradition. Because it is a part of their tradition, this storytelling of Anansi and his adventures was able to survive for hundreds of years and still continue today. The story is significant to the people who carried it on in terms of their culture, values, and identity as they believe Anansi is a superhero. Anansi was a strong, over character slave looked up to because of his ability to outwit the slave master and win his freedom. Stories can be a source of marginalized culture as they recognize the historical relationship between the area and its indigenous people. Not only does it describe what is unique about the place and the people, but it helps build a common understanding of heritage, traditional and inspirational connections, and values. But it can also be a source of goodness for marginalized cultures of the Caribbean because they might not have a full understanding of it and is not a part of the upbringing or culture. The dominant culture would normally punish anyone listening or telling these stories as it's a tactic slaves use to defeat them. Slave masters would also try to eradicate books or any knowledge associated with those people and their stories so they won't be able to pass down to the next generation 
and limit their beliefs and abilities to be independent of their own culture. They would then rely on slave masters who were in total control. These stories affect the entire nation in terms of its nationality or culture as the narrative gives citizens an awareness of their common values and characteristics as a nation. It also portrays a nation among other nations as unique. Other cultures in the Bahamas region find Anansi stories to be as entertaining while also being educated. It's entertaining as everyone finds it very interesting and funny. On the other hand, it teaches wisdom, skills, and knowledge to outsmart others. Contemporary story that closely relates to the Anansi folklore story is that of the Belize Police Department and that of the President of the Police Association. In this, the President of the Police Association closely relates to Anansi the character himself. The Belize Police Department are like the are those characters that Anansi connived in his story. Anansi was very conniving and deceiving to the characters around him. In this case, the members of the Belize Police Department who are police officers are such people. In this contemporary story, the president of the police association had long campaigned to have police officers pay being deducted every 15th and ending of every month, and that was to a deduction of $5. Over the years, several members of the Belize Police Department applied to receive benefits from these funds, but never received them. Some police officers fell into health issues, leading on medical expenses. Some had debts in their families. Some lost their homes due to house fire and flood, but never received any of those benefits. They long for answers from the president of the police association, but he would never give them a direct answer. Later on, uh, this former president of the police association was being investigated by other members of the police police department to find out what he was doing with the monies. The monies had accumulated to over a quarter million dollars. It was later found out that the result that it only showed he had been using the monies traveling around the country, also paying for expensive hotels and high-end meals and he claimed that it was all for administrative purposes of the police association. The police association is responsible for welfare benefits of the police department but the funds were never used for such benefits. So with this contemporary story the president of the the former president of the police association connived all the members of the Belize police department because they were fooled into have their pays being deducted and never received those benefits. So here is the president of the police association playing out as the character of Anansi and the members of the Belize police department playing out like the characters that Anansi connived. Anansi and Snake. Tiger was the undisputed king of the forest. Tiger lilies were named after him. Tiger moths were named after him. And the stories of the forest were called tiger stories. Anansi was a nobody in the forest hierarchy. When the animals gathered together, they would ask idle questions like, And just to poke fun, giraffe would say, Yes, Anansi. Like a church choir, they would all sing out. Anansi. Anansi got sick and tired of it all. One day he met Tiger face to face in the forest. Anansi bowed low to Tiger, but Tiger did not acknowledge Anansi in the least. He had no time to waste on such an insignificant speck. Tiger wanted to ignore Anansi, but his curiosity got the better of him. 
And what exactly you wanted to be your name after? The Anansi Stories! <laughs> Do one small thing for me, and I will let all the stories be named after Anansi. And what small thing would that be? Nothing too hard. Just capture a snake for me. <laughs> Good thing Anansi had eight legs to stand on, because at least four of them buckled at the same time. This snake was not your flimsy garden variety snake. The snake of the jungle was big, very big, and Anansi was small, very small. But Anansi could think big, so he said, I'll do it! At that, there was a huge burst of laughter from all the other <laughs> animals who had been <laughs> eavesdropping on the conversation. They went home, <laughs> tears of amusement rolling down their faces. Anansi went home very worried but thinking, this was on Monday. Uh. <laughs> Next day, Anansi went on the trail he knew Snake traveled on every day. He made a large noose out of a strong vine and placed some of Snake's favorite berries inside it. He hid in the bushes, holding the other end of the vine. Snake came slithering along the path. He spied the berries and his mouth watered. But he also spied the noose. He laid the weight of his body on the vine. Then he reached in and ate the berries quickly. Anansi tried and tried, but he could not pull the vine to close the noose. Snake's body was too heavy. Next day, Anansi went a little further down Snake's favorite trail and dug a pit in the ground. He placed a luscious hand of ripe berries in it. Then, smeared the sides of the pit with grease so that Snake would slip in when he tried to get the berries. Snake came along the path. He spied the berries and his mouth watered. But he also spied the grease. So, he wrapped his tail around a thick tree trunk. Then reached into the hole with his head and ate the berries. If he had lips, he would have licked them. He raised his head out of the pit, unwrapped his tail, and slithered away. Next day, it was Friday, the end of the week, and Anansi was still snakeless. He went directly to Snake's house and sat outside looking dejected. Snake came up and looked at Anansi in surprise and said, But too bright, eh? All week long you've been trying to catch me, now you're sitting in my yard for your face. <sighs> Snake said, What are you talking about, Anansi? What are they saying about me? I really shouldn't be telling you this, but it's true. They say you act like you're a god gift to animal. Thinking that you're the longest snake in the jungle, but you're smaller than this bamboo stick, the smallest one in the jungle. But eh, there's a problem here. Why every time you're stretching down your head, stretching up your head curls, and every time you're digging down your toe curls? Well, call them and answer, call them. Nobody can test me. And answer, scratch his chin. Time is healing, Anansi, if you don't believe me. By this time, curious animals were gathering around to watch. Anansi tied Snake's tail tightly to the bamboo with some vines. Then he said to Snake, Stretch! 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 Anansi had never seen a snake sweat. Snake stretched till his eyes were squeezed shut. And in a flash, Anansi tied his head to the pole, then his middle. The animals who had been watching were silent. There was no laughing at Anansi this time. He, he had said he would capture a snake, and he did. And from that day to this, the stories have been called Anansi stories.
This is one of the best known Anansi stories showing up Anansi's tricky, clever side. Compared to others, it shows Anansi in quite a positive light as the underdog using his brains to triumph in a hopeless situation. Other Anansi stories show up his lazy, greedy side as well, and some tell us of Anansi being too smart for his own good. Anansi was an important character to generations of slaves as he demonstrated the ability of the weak and the downtrodden to use brains, wit and cunning to triumph over the oppressor. Thank you Thank for you watching. For watching.